All right, everybody, what's going on? Today on the show, we have Jordan Harry, who went from having a speech impediment to reading 1,500 words per minute. And now with his platform, studyfast.co.uk, he teaches other people how to learn and read faster. So, Jordan, what's going on, man? Thank you for introducing me. I don't think I could have done it better. Um, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be on the show, uh, to share my story, and also give real practical, um, quick advice to all the listeners. Um, because there's no such thing as a bad reader just those with bad reading habits. So awesome. fingers crossed today we'll be able to break a few of those and uh, inspire a few people to read at least a book a week, a book a month, or whatever their personal goal is. Awesome, awesome. That's uh, We love practical tips. We love you know, exactly actionable tips that everybody can do in their daily lifestyle. So, but firstly, you know, before we dive deeper into what you do and to the speed reading topic, uh, what is your biggest superpower, Jordan? Oh. It's a cheeky question because if you go to the website studyfast.uk, you'll see our tagline is yep. unlock your reading ability because that is your superpower. So I would say that speed reading is my superpower. That's a, that's a no-brainer one. Yeah, exactly. When I checked your website, I was like, okay, I know what he's going to say. But still, <laughs> I wanted to hear it from you. <laughs> so definitely, uh, reading is uh, your superpower. But uh, like I did, you know, I mentioned this a little bit in the intro. You weren't always uh, this child that, uh, that read so fast. So tell us a little bit of your background story. You know, what, uh, what happened? How did, you, uh, how, how did your childhood went? You're right. And it's only something that we've recently started sharing. Um, I say we because, you know, I've got a great team behind me now. And what I realized was, you know, it didn't start at university when I was struggling to read. It started way, way, way time ago. It started when I was about 10 years old. I used to have a speech impediment. Um, and of course that varies, but I couldn't say my S's, F, H, I used to have a lisp. And because I couldn't pronounce the words, um, a lot of children in school, especially in the UK, we learn through phonics, which is through pronouncing the words. And because I couldn't pronounce them correctly, I didn't understand them. Therefore, when it came to reading simple English, my first language, I couldn't comprehend it. And so your reading speed is limited by your comprehension. So a lot of times, a lot of my students ask, Jordan, you know, I'm reading my second language. How can I increase my reading speed? And my only advice is to co increase your comprehension. Learn a new word. Eat. I do that with English. Um, you know, the first practical tip for the listeners is um, if you go to the App Store, I'm not an affiliate with these guys, it's a free app. Download Word of the Day. It's a great tool which notifies you each day. Um, it's quite a complex word normally. It does push you. And by increasing your comprehension, you increase your reading speed. So it started all the way back when I was 10. Thankfully, I got over my speech impediment. And that's why people say, and say, say that I sound quite posh. <laughs> and so as that progressed, I got to university. And I found I was still behind my peers with my reading ability. So one night, Googled how to read faster. And to my surprise, there were these mythical creatures called speed readers. You know, these superhumans that could read at 10,000 words per minute with 80% comprehension. And it blew my mind. And I solely started to learn to speed read to address my own problem, not to start a business. Um, I had no business acumen. I'm still winging it. And I bought all these books. I think I spent about £300 on all the recommended books. So I had this beautiful bookshelf that if you walked to my room, you thought I was Lincoln or Ty Lopez. I hope your <laughs> listeners know who Ty Lopez yeah. is. <laughs> Perfect. If you don't know who Ty Lopez is, don't go check him out. Um, <laughs> now, with all these books on my shelf, I'd only read about two of them. And I don't think I remembered what those two had told me. So I decided to reinvest in speed reading, my time, money, to get through the books to help me create a business. And as I started doing this, my friends, of course, you know, I'd speak to them. They were interested, so I would teach my friends how to speed read, and then their friends wanted to know. So one night I winged it, put a Facebook event up, charged nine pound, um, went to a house party, came back from the house party, and the crazy thing was I had one enrollment um, and it blew my mind for two reasons. One, someone trusted me. They didn't know what I was offering. They didn't know what speed reading was, but they wanted to know. And number two, I was now petrified because I now had to produce a presentation and I had no content yeah. and I had to condense about two years of my studies into two hours. 
and that's how it all started and it snowballed now uh, to workshops around the world um, online courses being on podcasts with yourself um, yeah amazing there's a lot more in the pipeline I can I can imagine man so happy for you so so really a, a self-taught speed reader who's now spreading the words uh, you know across across the world around you awesome so uh, you know I've, I've seen your TEDx uh, speech uh, I think that's a great speech that everybody who uh, you know interested to, to, to know more about Jordan just go and type in TEDx and Jordan Harry and that link definitely will pop up and there uh, you speak you know you first start your speech about the bad habits so that's uh, a I, I seem like, you know, this speed reading is a really interesting topic for me and uh, it seems like uh, I do the same mistakes as everybody does. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, go, go through a little bit the, those bad habits that everybody do about uh, reading. I'd be more than happy to. And to save people 10 minutes of listening to me talking, I'll condense <laughs> it on your podcast right now. So there's a variety of bad habits um, that us as individuals have developed over time. And we haven't had a class called reading for many of us since the age of 12. So it can be quite tricky to at least reduce some of the habits. The three ones I mentioned are subvocalization. Now, subvocalization is that little voice in your head that you use when you read. Now, you're probably not used to it, but you're probably now a lot more aware to it now that I've mentioned it. Now, this necessarily isn't a bad thing. It's super effective when we need to learn a new word because we learn best when we can use different senses. So auditory, visual, uh, touch. So when we actually need to learn a new word or a difficult content, subvocalization is really useful. But when we're reading something that we're well adapted with, we don't necessarily need it. You know, simple things like the word business. We know what it means, we don't have to say it aloud. We should be able to see the words instead of hear them. And one way we can do this is by distracting the brain. Um, there's various other ways, but the quickest way is you can simply tap on your leg whilst you're reading. Try not tapping on the table. It can be quite annoying for the people around you. Because by tapping on your leg, what it does, it causes a low level distraction. Not so much that you lose track of what you're reading, but just enough that your brain struggles to focus on two things at once, which is that voice reading. So by tapping on your leg, that motor skill, you should notice that voice in your head begin to subside. Now I've trained various students and some of them say, ah, it's gone like that. But others at the end of the workshop are like, Jordan, I still hear that voice. And that's okay. Speed reading is a habit. <laughs> and you cannot break a habit of a lifetime in one day. So stick at it. Another way you can do it is by pressing the tip of your tongue to the top of your mouth. You can't quite see what I'm doing but I think you can get a good visual picture. Yeah. If not, refer back to the video and you'll see what I mean. Yeah. By doing so, once again, we create that small distraction. And the third tip would be listening to music without lyrics. The reason why you want to listen to music without lyrics is the same again. It's that level of distraction. And by listening to music such as classical music, it produces alpha waves, which gets our brain into a state of relaxation. So I hope I didn't get too sciencey and kept it super practical. That's but that's good. Get, get to distract the brain. Get as sciencey as uh, as you need, man. <laughs> Unlock my inner geek. That's my superpower. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So sub vocalization. That's uh, bad habit number one, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to number two, which is regression. Now we've all got to the end of a page and thought to ourselves, "What did I just read?" And even worse, to end the sentence. Now, this happens to myself, you know, I'm not superhuman, I might have a superpower, but it still happens to me. And often it isn't your inability to understand what you're reading. It's actually down to your motivation and concentration. You know, we all have to read dry and difficult material. Um, you know, various students listening to this podcast now know how that feels. And many professionals who have to read reports about a meeting they were already in probably feel the same. Now, what you need to do to help yourself gain that motivation is have active questions. Become an active reader. Because if you want to find good answers, we must have good questions, right? So the idea is, when you're reading, have a couple questions at the forefront of your mind. Yeah. What am I looking to find from this? 
what are the key words? What are the key figures? How long is this going to take for me to read? Having these questions, you'll notice that you're actively now looking for the answers. And believe it or not, they will start to pop out. So you're now engaged with the reading instead of being a passive reader. The other one with regression, other than questions, is having an environment which is ideal for you. I hate being in a library. It's too quiet. I think I've got ADHD. <laughs> and I always want to be doing something, what they're doing over there. So when it's quiet, my brain just goes all over the place. Yeah. I actually find it best in a coffee shop. And there's some studies around this again with the noise level and that alpha wave. Coffee shops aren't too loud where you get distracted with the conversation next to you. But they're loud enough that your brain has to consciously block out that conversation next to you and focus 10 times harder on the task at hand. So making sure whatever it is, whether that's sitting in your favorite chair in your house or going to your favorite coffee shop, make sure you experiment, find the best time, the best place when you get your best work done and have those questions at the forefront to address aggression. Got it. And these questions are like uh, you should think about it uh, before you pick up the book or is it like I don't know you do chap chapter by chapter because I imagine sometimes you know I don't know if it's a if it's a new book mm. you know you have no idea I mean yeah I, I guess you would know what this book is about but you know you still don't know where it starts you know you don't know what kind of questions to ask like could you give us a couple of examples of uh, what those questions could be really good question um, and the way to set up your questions would to do a quick scan so we call this a pre-read in the speed reading community the idea is you go through the front and back cover. Sounds common sense, but it isn't always common practice. And you get a good gist of, okay, what's the book going to be about? How many pages are there? What's the table of contents? You know, find the key chapters that you need to read. And I understand with a novel, you use a different technique. You wouldn't skip to chapter 10 and then wonder who Daisy is. <laughs> but the idea is we're using this, like you say, we're looking for information. So we're looking for nonfiction. We're using this example. Have general questions to begin with. Like, okay, you know, one of the questions is about countries. Yeah. Um, let's say, who was the first president of America? So you're just looking for countries and names. So now your brain is going to be a lot more biased to the names of countries, to the name of presidents, and it will also probably pick up the years. And you're right, as you go along, Feel free to adapt your questions. It will change as you get more information. Got it. All right. Makes sense. All right. So the bad habit number three is? Fixations. Fixations. And what a tricky one to talk about over audio. But we'll do our best. We'll do our best. <laughs> now, fixations are where our eyes are still on the page. So on average, an untrained reader has between about 10 to 15 fixations. So if you can picture that's your eyes bouncing from word to word to word. Now your eyes are fascinating. They have muscles that attach to the eyeball. Now if you can imagine, those muscles are having to work extremely hard bouncing from word to word. Yeah. And often, and I hope your listeners can relate, you know, people get tired when they read. Sometimes they get tired after one page, after two pages. And the common question I get asked is, Jordan, how can I read for longer? You know, I just feel sleepy. I don't know if you've experienced that to us. I did. I, I did. I used to like, oh, yes, now I'm in a bed. You know, I'm going to read it. Mm. <laughs> I read two pages. I'm, I'm off. <laughs> it's game over. Off, off to the planet. It's uh, dreamy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel bad for the author. But it's probably not the author's fault. It's not. The fault is down to you, Taurus. And it's down to the listeners. What it is, is... The eyes aren't efficient in their movement. So we need to make the eye movement a lot more smoother. Now, the great way to address fixations and reduce this is by using something everyone has, and that's your hand. Now, you can use a pen or your cursor on your laptop. But by using a physical guide like your finger, run your finger underneath the line of each sentence at a speed which is comfortable. Now, what our eyes are designed to, they're designed to follow smooth motion. So by using your fingertip to kind of underline each sentence, you'll notice your eyes running a smoother 
line and you can do this with a partner if you draw a circle in front of someone and ask them to follow your finger you'll see how smooth their eyeballs move and if you get them to try and draw a circle without a physical guide you'll see a lot of jolting about a great drill to do with a partner now the great thing about using pacer is you read for longer because you won't get as fatigued and you'll actually start to read faster just like i hope everyone's our athletic fans because i'm a triple jumper so I hope people tuning in know what triple jump is and watch <laughs> athletics. But if you haven't, I think in the, oh God, now it's going to test my knowledge, in the 5K, they have a pacer. Yeah. The person who goes out and sets the pace for everyone to follow. This is why this technique is called a pacer. The pacer sets the pace. Now, when we're reading, we don't know how fast or slow we're reading. So by having a physical guide, we can actually keep up with a consistent pace or we can push ourselves and go a little bit faster. And of course, you'll notice your comprehension suffers a little bit. But after about a minute, your eyes catch up and your brain also catches up to the new increased reading speed. And you'll notice you start to comprehend a little bit more. Just like training. When you go to the gym and you try and bench 200 kilograms, which is nothing for me, I've you'll notice, Lisa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll notice on the first day, yeah. your muscles start to tear, unless you're Taurus and you can do it with one hand. <laughs> Now, you take a rest, you come back, and you go and lift up to 100 kilograms again, you can lift it for more reps because your muscles have adapted. So with the pacer, you'll get over that fatigue, and you'll also be able to push your reading speed by pushing it just beyond your usual comprehension, but stick at it long enough, take a break, come back to it the next day, and you'll notice it's a lot easier. Got it. So that's the three habits, a couple of tips, to reduce because we don't want to completely eliminate sub vocalization yeah that's awesome that's super super useful and about this last stuff you know about about the pacing so i can relate about the you know i tried i think i heard this technique you know i tried to take mm -hmm. a ruler or maybe a pencil you know and kind of go line by line and ah. uh but i think i didn't stick to it long enough because i think after a couple of pages i, I realized like oh shit, my comprehension is actually <laughs> you know going down you know like oh i have to go back to my old habits you know i prefer yeah. kind of this you know read slower but understand more or remember more what i read you know so but uh i think i think i'm i was just too impatient i just need to kind of stick to it make a little breaks right yeah and you know the show is all about habits and habit it formation is. and as i mentioned at the beginning myself and for many people we haven't had a classical reading since we were 12 and yet we expect to now break these habits in one day of course we have the accelerated learning that when you learn something new you know, and your mind's open to this. It's called hyper learning that like you never knew before. I know things like um, the capital of Australia um, isn't what everyone believes it is. It isn't Sydney. It's um, Canberra. Canberra. That's the one. Yeah. And now for people listening, they're going to be like, well, no way. And I guarantee you people remember that Canberra is now the capital of Australia because for so long they thought it was Sydney. So when they realized, well, that isn't true learning sticks and that's why with speed reading you'll see your reading speed increase dramatically in a short period of time because for so long you believe this was how fast i've got to read i've always been dyslexic i've always been a bad learner and as soon as i show them actually no that isn't the case and this is the technique and it is down to mindset if you think you're bad at remembering people's names, well, guess what? <laughs> You'll forget the next person you meet. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So great. So three bad habits uh, most most of us do, and um, I'm I'm pretty sure you know they're even more. But let's let's go now to the learning how to speed read, right? So I guess the first lesson is to uh, be aware of the bad habits you do and maybe mm -hmm. try to eliminate them. But uh, let's say, okay, I've did the trick about the self vocalization. You know, I, I tap. I actually tried to tap while we were, you know, I was listening to you, and I think my level of concentration went up. Yeah. Uh, uh, then the second it makes second, me sound like I'm a boring guy. Come to us. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, it's just. I also think I have ADHD, so I'm like, you know, my mind is flowing. Like, okay, what would be the next question? You know, uh, where do I look? You know, it's all this kind of uh, stuff as a, as a host of the podcast <laughs> <laughs> happening in my brain at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So, so the second is uh, about uh, having a environment that's good for concentration. 
yeah. right? And uh, and num number three is uh, is basically pacing, uh, pacing your uh, your reading. Great. So mm -hmm. so once you uh, improve those bad habits, you know, and eliminate that, like, do you see from from the students from your students those who eliminate, you know, don't let's say let's say they don't learn any new techniques but they simply eliminate bad habits uh how does this affect the speed of reading right away it's a unique question purely because you can eliminate those habits and once again we start with mindset and all the training because that's where we've got to start mindset memory then the speed reading techniques but the most important part is the application yeah you know, how do you apply this to the real world Hopefully I gave the listeners a couple of practical advice, you know, with a non-fiction book, how to approach it. That's only one way to approach it. There's loads of ways to approach your inbox, a fiction book, um, a scientific paper, a PDF. The list goes on. So the habits, the mindset is a great baseline. But knowing how to apply it, that's another level. Of course. So to measure the results after you know eliminating the habits it usually increases by about let me try and do some quick maths um so the average reading speed is 250 words per minute got it now at the top of my head from the first initial baseline test that the students do after breaking their habits in the first hour of the workshop they usually come up with a score of about three to four hundred so it's a marginal increase by about 100 words per minute. Still, like percentage-wise, roughly 50% increase. That's not that bad. Correct, correct. And the really important figure is not just the reading speed, but the comprehension. Yeah. So I would say the quick marginal improvement will come from addressing the habits. But where you'll see the long-term success is the day-to-day -day application of, of the various techniques. Of course. Of course, we know it. We know it better than anybody else. Uh, our community is doing these twenty-one day challenges, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, twenty-one days obviously will not eliminate, like we just discussed, will not eliminate a habit you had for your lifetime. But it will be, you know, if you are consistent for twenty-one days, you'll see how mm -hmm. easier it is to keep going. Or even if you fall off, you know, the wagon for for let's say I don't know, a couple of days, you'll see how much easier it is to actually come back rather than you know the time when you started. You know, the first week always mm -hmm. the hardest and so on. So practice makes it perfect in any kind of skill or habit. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. So, <clears throat> all right. So let's uh, move then to some tips. You know, what are the, the usual speed reading techniques that uh, we can learn about right now? So the first would be the pacer. That's kind of the holy grail. Um, right. It's one that people can use straight away. The step up from that would be to start one word in on a sentence and finish one word out. Now you're doing this for two reasons. You're going to start to expand your you're going to start to expand your peripheral vision. You notice that, you know, whilst looking at the screen, you can see the objects around your laptop screen or your phone. Yes. And we need to start utilizing that when we read. So by starting one word in, we start to expand our visual vision, peripheral vision. Now, over time, you can then start two words in and finish two words out, constantly using your finger, underlining the sentence. But as I mentioned before, just starting a little in and finish before the last word. Another great thing about using this advanced pacer technique is you're going to start eliminating a word on each line, two words each line. So by doing so, from a generic page, you could reduce reading 50 words. So within seconds, you would improve your reading speed by 100 words per minute, just by simply starting one word in and finishing one word out. So that would be one advanced technique that I'd start giving the listeners. Got it, and, and just, just a question here, how long does it usually take for people to get used to this, to, to, you know, for it to become natural? For it to become natural, it varies. Yeah. It really does. It varies on people's motivation to learn. Of course. I think you'll find that if you want to learn how to read fast and remember more, you'll commit yourself and you'll yeah. practice 10 minutes each day. And if you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. We all find time to brush our teeth. Yeah. So while you're brushing your teeth, read your book. So I would say within the first couple of minutes, 
you'll get used to starting one word in and finishing one word out. Where it begins to get slightly tricky, and it will come down to the individual's ability, is when do they move two words in? When do they move three words in? And before they know it, they'll be just running their finger down the middle of their page. That'd be brilliant. Is that, is that also the way you read at the moment? More or less? Now, it's a good question. I read at 1,500 words per minute on <laughs> something that I understand. Yeah. So business, sports, entrepreneurship. But if you give me a book about psychology, yeah, I'm going to have to slow down to about 600 words per minute because we come back to that comprehension. Got it. So a lot of speed readers, you know, they kind of pull the wall over people's eyes that they can read at 10,000 words per minute. Now, I don't want to make a sweeping statement and say they can't, but I'd be very surprised if you chuck a Spanish book in front of them or a book on aerodynamics, a topic that they have no previous knowledge okay. about. Um, coming back to another tip to give to users is it is down to small habits. I don't know if you've mentioned small habits in your podcast before. No, no we haven't, no. Like, not that term, no. Perfect. So small habits is the idea where you do two minutes of deliberate training. Deliberate means you focus on nothing. It's high quality. It's all about the task at hand. Now, two minutes, to many of your listeners will be like, oh, why would I bother? Two minutes, that's nothing. That's the whole purpose. There's this kind of 20-second resistance to a new activity that we all have. You know, it's called Parkinson's Law. The more time we give a task, the more perceived importance that we give to it. So for many of us, even myself, I've got a lot of emails to kind of get back to. But after 20 seconds of kind of sitting there and doing it, I'm in my flow. But it's that first 20 seconds of resistance that you need to get over. Now, by having a book by your bedside table, you reduce that resistance. You have to make it easy for yourself. So small habits is by reducing the resistance to the activity. So carry a book with you. I know that's something you advise listeners. Audio books, we don't want you to cheat. So that's why you need to carry it. Have it on your bedside table. And by only doing two minutes, you'll notice it's so easy to be done that you'll do it nearly enough every day. Making that habit formation. And by doing only two minutes, you'll notice you often read for longer. Because whilst you're reading, you're like, oh, I'm in the flow. Just like when I respond to my emails. And you might read for 20, 40, two hours, which will be fantastic. But we don't expect you to do that every day. Yeah. And that's another thing with motivation. People set these goals, you know, I need to go for a run every day. And some days you don't feel like it. Some days you won't feel like reading a book. I don't. It's my superpower. Two minutes makes it very doable. So I know that isn't a quick bullet, silver bullet for the listeners. It's practical and it works. Exactly. And it's just a simple sort of a life hack to like, actually, I just recorded yesterday a podcast about, you know, free uh, tips, how to boost your motivation when you are not mm. feeling it, you know, and actually the tip mm. number three was exactly to break it down to the smaller steps, whatever it is, you know, if it's a big task or it's a goal, or if it's, you know, losing mm -hmm. weight or reading a book, you know, breaking it down, you know, instead of like thinking of like, oh, oh my goodness, I have to read this 600 pages book, you know, even the thought yeah. of it is like, I'm Don't. never going to finish. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's going to take a month or whatever. But yeah, if you say like, oh, look, I just need to read two pages a, uh, a day and, you know, maybe maybe then I'll read a little bit more. In a couple of months, it's done. You know, at least it's yeah. done, right? <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. So um, I've, I've kind of jumped in, you know, squeezed that question a little bit uh, uh, in between these tips, but uh, I'm super curious to understand your reading habits, right? So what I understood mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, what you mentioned before, that uh, whenever the topic is familiar to you, uh, and obviously you're reading in the language that you understand, this is mm -hmm. when you reach the top speed, right? Right. But uh, what are, you know, what are, let's say, how do you read at the moment? Just curious to know. Yeah, so something that I've recently started working on, and you mentioned it there, is if we read in our comfort zone, we're not really going to progress. It's as simple as that. So I'm currently trying to learn Espanol. So I've changed everything from my laptop to my phone to Spanish. And the purpose of that is because I'm pushing myself out my comfort zone because if we constantly read material 
that we understand we can read fast, we're not going to improve when we're faced with a topic we're not familiar with. So that's my first one, is that I'm constantly pushing myself outside my comfort zone. Because where there's struggle and resistance, there's progression. So we need to move towards it. Constantly keep pushing yourself, just like an athlete. My other reading habits, I know I mentioned the audiobooks, but really, you know, ideally our lifestyles don't always permit for us to read. You know, when we're driving, it's hard to get knowledge. And I think that's why your podcast is going to do so well and will keep doing so well. <laughs> Hopefully. It's because you need to be able to learn through different senses. For example, I'm trying to learn Spanish now, and this is a kind of a, a sweeping rule for anyone trying to learn a new language. You need to learn and hack it from all different angles. You need to start reading, typing, listening, speaking the language. So audio books is something I'm really hot on right now. So if I'm not reading, <laughs> I'm listening to information. And a great way, another little golden tip, there's tips all over the shot on this one. Speed up your audio books. Get your brain used to absorbing information at higher speeds. I almost get frustrated now when I have to watch a video at its normal speed. Okay. Get your brain accustomed to learning faster. And one way you can do that, it's so easy on Audible, on YouTube, hit the settings, hit speed, start slow, 1.25, and work your way up to two times. Got it. So you're all about speed, right? You go from speed reading to speed listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. it, like I say, it's just hacking learning. How do you hack it? So number one habit for me is push myself out of my comfort zone because I'm always trying to learn. Number two is, like you say, learning to sp learning how I learn fast on all platforms. And my other reading habit is by teaching because something taught once is twice learned. So for your listeners today, if they've learned anything really valuable, Please share it. Yeah, I don't want to hold this information back. And unfortunately, a lot of great speed readers do. They charge £500 for their online courses. They're 60 years old. They've got 20 PhDs. And they don't want you to share it. I don't have the above. And I don't charge the above because I want it to be accessible. And I want, you know, the time that I have on this earth, I'm going to get quite deep, to be of value. Got it. So... Once you start talking about what you've learned to someone else, you start to realize gaps in your own knowledge. You know, if you try to explain the pace of method to your friend, and then you're like, uh, oh yeah, I don't know how long it takes. Then you go back and you find out by going to my website. But no, seriously, that's the great thing about teaching, is you find the gaps in your own knowledge. So push yourself outside your comfort zone, learn on all different platforms, and teach other people, even if it's your friends. That's amazing. That's uh, again, yeah. You're you're dropping so much knowledge right here, and we are only uh, roughly half an hour in. So, <laughs> knowledge people, bombs all over the place. Knowledge bombs exactly there. <laughs> there, we are exploding that the whole globe is, <laughs> is is going bust after this podcast. So, uh, awesome. And actually, uh, you know, I still have so many freaking questions, uh, and uh, but we have to space it out somehow. But. Um, uh, number one thing what I want to mention is, you know, we talked this before the pot, uh, you know, before we started recording is that actually you have, have uh, an amazing, amazing sort of a gift for our listeners, right? I and do. So uh, could you let us know how can we get that? Awesome. So first of all, the offer. I hope yeah. everyone's listening. Turn it out. If you head over to Instagram, head over to that little icon on your phone, hit the little magnifying glass and search Jordan Harry. Jordan with two N's, Harry with two Y's. You'll see my nice little smiley face. Follow me and then DM me and say that you listened to the podcast, that you loved it and that you've been inspired. If you let me know that you came via the 21 Day Hero, I will give you access to one of the online courses that will solve one of your problems. Now, by September, we hope to have four online courses. At the moment, we only have one. So depending on when you actually DM me, I'll do my best to make sure I get you an online course that suits you best. And the reason why I'm doing that, I'm not expecting anything in return. And I want the listeners to know this, that if you give expecting, you're going to lose. You have to give value. You have to give content. For me, I gain just as much 
from having in-depth conversations with like-minded people who listen to your podcast as they probably get from listening. So it'd be great to connect. Instagram's where I'm at. Come see some of my funny videos. I give loads of memory reading hacks away. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to speak to you. Amazing, amazing, Jordan. That's, uh, uh, that's like before it was a huge value bombs. And this is like a nuclear, you know, the mother of all the bombs. So <laughs> a, a, every, everybody should just head out and find you on Instagram, DM you. Uh, tell them they came from 21 Day Hero and they're going to get these amazing courses from you. So uh, tell me what's the, you know, I, I'm, I have two more questions about the speed reading and without go, going too much into detail is, uh, you know, number one is about the comprehension and number two is about... Uh, um, what's the typical, let's say, learning speed? I, I, I know that we already touched this a little bit. You know, it really depends on motivation and on, mm -hmm. on the mindset and how, how well do you follow, you know, all your tips. But uh, still, I think, I think I saw that you, you helped over uh, 3,000 students, if that's, if that's correct, right? So I guess you could draw some sort of, a, <laughs> you know, average of, uh, of your knowledge. So, so let's take number one. How fast people can master the skill of speed reading or let's say mm -hmm. how fast can they double let's let's go simple how how fast yeah. can they actually double the reading speed and go from 250 to 500 and maybe then from 500 to 1000 words per minute of course. um so going back to your question make sure i answer it how long does it take to become a speed reader yeah perfect so quantifiably being a speed reader someone who can read over 600 words per minute with 60 percent comprehension now that 60% comprehension isn't good enough for me. I push my students to go for 75% and above. And that secures their reading speed. Because if you can read, if you say you read at 10,000 words per minute, but you do the comprehension test, you know, 20%, you haven't passed. So identify your goal. What gets measured gets managed, Peter Drucker once said. So if you want to become a speed reader, 600 words per minute is your goal. Take the baseline reading test on my website. It's a free app on program. So if you head over to studyfast.uk, you can test your reading speed by just scrolling down and it should be set to 250 words per minute. So you can test yourself to see how fast 600 words per minute is and how much you comprehend. But to give you a quantifiable number of how long does it take, after a two to three hour workshop with myself, and for many other attendees on different speed reading workshops, you'll be able to double, if not triple, your reading speed. But what's important is the progression after. A lot of people, they leave the workshops on a big high and they forget everything over the days. It's that simple yeah. learning bell. It's like a bell shape. Now, the idea is that we keep that graph going up, that we maintain and if not increase your reading speed. So what I would say is make it a habit. Over 21 days, if you can keep practicing the speed reading techniques by speed reading the chocolate bar that you're mm -hmm. about to buy at checkout, you're going to keep that consistent habit formation going. So within two hours of doing the online or physical course with myself, you'll be able to double, if not triple, your reading speed. But what we're really looking for is that long-term success. And we want to try and aim for 21 days at least. Awesome. So then, the, then after learning... Uh, all the techniques, read at least, I assume, 10, 15 minutes a day using those, uh, those, those tips. Mm -hmm. And this way you will keep the learnings within you. Awesome. And, and, and then comprehension. So this is, uh, this is uh, for me, probably the most important topic is, is the comprehension because this is, I think, a lot of um, criticisms for the speed readers come mm. from that exact fact that uh, they say, yes, they read fast, but how much do they remember? You know, how much do they understand? So, so uh, like you said, this typical speed reader uh, could say if, if they have 60 or above percent comprehension, that's, that's kind of a fine. And mm -hmm. for your students, you aim for 75 to 80%. So uh, how, how can you remain, how can you keep the comprehension while still reading fast? The simple question is memory training. Um, and that's why I train it first. Visual image, and I'm going to come back to why I use visual images all the time, is picture red bucket. So the red bucket is your memory. Okay. The funnel there's a red funnel now, just above the bucket. That's your comprehension. So how much you actually understand. Now we've got a garden hose. Now the garden hose is your usual reading speed. Now at the moment, the water from the garden hose is going into the funnel, your comprehension, 
and it's going in quite nicely. So you understand it. So a lot of water is going into the bucket. If we were to now swap out the garden hose and put in a fire hose, increase your wind speed, very little water would actually trickle in to your bucket because the funnel would overflow. Got it. Okay. So what I do on my courses, which is unique, is we expand that funnel, so your comprehension, meaning more water can go into your bucket, your long-term memory. So when we introduce the fire hose by increasing reading speed, your funnel can handle that new amount of water. If someone's just tuned in, they're going to be like, what is he going on about? Yeah. But I hope the listeners are following. Is, is this a gardening podcast? Or what? Yeah. <laughs> and what a gardening podcast this is. That's what they yeah. would be saying. Yeah. <laughs> so the key aspect to maintaining your comprehension is good is by investing in memory training. And thankfully, that's what I deliver, embedded in all of the courses. More practical tips, visual images. We remember things best in visual images. We love stories. We hate just written, boring form. In fact, 60% of this information will be forgotten by the time these listeners have heard this, if they haven't added visual images. Now, if by adding visual images, it will increase by 40% the retention of the information, which is incredible. And this can be applied to remembering someone's name. You know, Taurus, your name. A lot of people hate forgetting people's names. So when being introduced to yourself, I picked up the horoscope. You know, being a Taurus, the horoscope, I'm not that's one. Right. But that's what I pictured with you. So when I think of you, I think of the horoscope. So if I can't remember your name, I work backwards. Got it. You know, I think, okay, ball like, okay, horoscopes, their birth, star sign, Taurus. Ah, Taurus, nice and easy. You know, Henry, picture Henry the Hoover. He's red, he's got a long nose. The guy you've just met has got a long nose. It's all these little hooks that your brain can use if you forget something. So when reading, try to attach visual images to what you're reading. Another tip for memory would also be association. It kind of ties in with visual images. We learn best when we can attach new knowledge to pre-existing knowledge. So for example, I know my horoscopes quite well, apart from what month Taurus is. <laughs> I understand Taurus, I understand horoscopes, I love Pisces, I'm a Pisces. So attaching your name to a particular topic that I'm really interested in is perfect. That's what people need to do when they're learning is attach new information to pre-existing information they already have. Mm -hmm. Got it. So by using visual images and association, you'll start to improve your memory, which helps your comprehension. So as you increase your reading speed, you can comprehend what you're reading. Got and that was, that so, was an accelerated course in memory training. So I do I apologize imagine, if people were looking for more. <laughs> I, 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 I can imagine. And plus it's like, uh, like we just said, you know, theory is nothing. After this podcast, maybe you, everybody feels so pumped, but you got to practice people. You got to use those tips that Jordan just shared, you know, and try it yourself. Try slowly, try one by one, you know, try, mm. uh, try, try step by step, you know, don't try all of these tips right away because I sure. guess it will be overwhelming and, you know, you'll, uh -huh. you'll just feel like, uh, th this is not for me. I never, I can never be a speed reader. But so actually, this is a question: Can every person be a speed reader, or did you see that certain type of people uh, simply struggle at that? It comes back to mindset. If you believe you're a bad reader, you will struggle reading. Now, of course, there's medical conditions like dyslexia, and there's different techniques people with dyslexia must use and mustn't use when it comes to speed reading. And this is comes where you need to start working one to one with a mentor. Now I'm creating a mentor program, super affordable at seven pound a month, where they'll have access to me on a monthly basis. Now for someone with dyslexia, if they go on my online course, I've only got one section on how to speed read with dyslexia. But there's different levels of dyslexia. There's dyslexia for numbers with actual speech. So actually understanding the person's individual needs is going to be crucial to their success. So for me, I'm going to make a sweeping statement. As long as your vision is clear, you can increase your vision speed. People will have different barriers, whether it's mindset, physiological with dyslexia, with yeah. speech impediments. But I'd like to say I'm a living testament that you can have a physical barrier 
overcome it. Increase your reading speed. Teach others how to. So if you do feel uncertain, like, oh, I'm not sure what Jordan's on about could work for me, follow me on Instagram, DM me, ask me. Let's have a conversation. Because I'm not saying I know all the answers, but I will try to find the answers if I don't know. But I want to help as many people as I can. So this, the simple answer to that is yes. And if you generally feel like, nope, Jordan, this doesn't work for me, please challenge me. And we'll work together. You know, and I will give you free advice on actually, you're right, don't use the pace of technique. You need to use this technique. Amazing, amazing, good, good one. So good word of encouragement and uh, just amazing how um, humble you are to, to offer this uh, you know, advice for free and just, and you know, we can really see you enjoy what you're doing. So that's the, I think, you know, number one rule to success. So I can, I can, <laughs> I can, I can definitely see you succeeding really, really well. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Seriously. Of course, Jordan. Um, awesome. So I think, you know, we covered sort of, uh, it was a crash course for speed reading, you know, we definitely a lot of information and thank you for sharing, you know, uh, your knowledge there. Uh, I'm, pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, that, so this is uh, a day free at the time we're recording a day free of the day, uh, 21 day daily book reading challenge for us. So uh, I'll definitely try to employ some of those uh, techniques slowly one by one uh, and see how, how do I improve and you know at least until the end of the challenge I'm definitely going to try and, and try to DM you and see you know how did I improve it and of course I think I think the measuring actually part is quite crucial right so I should mm. everybody who wants to improve uh, first they should read a page or whatever or just time it per minute right so how many how many uh, words are there so then you could track it that amazing Great. So then let's move to the personal profile questions. And uh, we, we used to have this sort of a rapid fire round, which now we kind of moved around there and there, you know, and added a couple of extra questions just because we cool. want to re reconstruct, you know, reverse engineer how successful people like you live, think, and what do they do during the day, you know? So uh, the first question is, uh, how does your typical day look like? I wish I could give a simple answer. It varies, um, and that's yeah. what I love. I'm highly disciplined, so I do triple jump on a European level. So regardless of my schedule, I always make my training sessions. In touch with, I haven't missed a training session apart from being ill. And I think that's become key to my success when it comes to fitness, because when something needs doing and I don't really feel like doing it, I get past that 20 second of kind of resistance, and I get it done. So day to day, um, depending on what country, what city I'm in, um, I always have my laptop on me. In the morning, I reply to all my social media messages on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and then that's that. Because what well, the problem is, if you respond to people throughout the day, you're constantly distracting yourself from the task at hand, and I'll respond at the end of the day. So two messages a day, eh, two messages a day, and that keeps me engaged with my community. During the day, that's when I get kind of my important work done. And it's kind of, yeah, all guns blazing, jumping task. I'm talking to my team, they work remotely. So I've got Slack up. And it's focused on one task at a time. And the way I organize it is I use Stephen Covey's, um, I can't remember what it's called, I think it's Time Management Quadrant. For anyone listening and you're not quite sure, check it out, Stephen Covey time management quadrant. The idea is I have urgent and important. So these are the things that if I aren't done today, shit's going down tomorrow. So urgent and important, I then have urgent and not important, you know, things like fill up the car. Then I have something say, not urgent, but it's important. So it doesn't have to get done straight away, but that's gonna be next on the list. And I've got not urgent and not important. Now, usually this list is huge. <laughs> Because purely these are the things which aren't urgent and aren't really important. But when I'm free, I literally just drag and drop and I move them up, move them up the chain of order. And that way, it keeps me accountable to what's most important. Because time's the only thing we can't get back. We can always make more money, but we've all got 24 hours. What we do with them is the key. So that's how I manage my day to day. Unfortunately, that's... it doesn't show what I do day to day. <laughs> 
that's uh, that's still very useful. But uh, and how do you have a standard morning routine? So besides, uh, you know, dedicating some uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, amount of time to responding to your uh, fans and, and community, yeah. what do you do in the first hour of the day? Let's say first hour, I wake up looking flawless. I then at what, at what time usually? I, my body doesn't let me lay in past eight o'clock. Um, so I get my eight hours sleep being an athlete and entrepreneur. It's tricky. I still need to get my eight hours. So bed at midnight, usually wake up at eight. I make myself my protein oats. So mix my shaker up, pour that in with my oats, chocolate flavor. It's gorgeous. You're missing a trick if you're not doing it. <laughs> and then from there, it's straight onto my Trello. Trello is a time management team collaboration online tool. It's free. Once again, I'm not an affiliate. And you can make these urgent, not important lists. And I see what I've got to do today. And I get going. Urgent and important. Let's go. Um, purely because I get the best work done, usually between 11 and 11. And that's a huge window. <laughs> it is. But it gets me in that mindset, okay, mm -hmm. kind of at 11 o'clock tonight, I'm going to be zapped. There's not going to be anything else in me. So I start as early as I can. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I reply to the messages, eat, takes about an hour of my time. And then we just get going with urgent, important tasks. Got it. And do you uh, plan any of your stuff, uh, you know, a day in advance? Or do you always take day by day? You wake up in the morning and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do today. Or do you plan in advance? I'm so glad you mentioned it. I do it towards the end of the day. So come 11 p.m. where my brain is worth nothing to anyone. Yeah. The only thing it's worth doing is what do I want to do tomorrow? Because you're right. I can wake up with such confidence that oh, I've got something to do today. And that mm -hmm. gives people meaning. So yeah, 11 p.m., I say, okay, we didn't get that done today. That needs to be urgent and important now. Actually having work today, that's not as important as I thought. So yeah, 11 p.m., I start reshuffling it, preparing it for the following day so we mm -hmm. can smash it. Amazing, got it. And uh, when you wake up, do you usually use an alarm clock or you are sort of a... Uh whenever you know your natural wake upper if that's a word <laughs> oh, i really do admire those that can wake up without alarm clock yeah. um like i say my body won't let me lay in past about nine like without an alarm so i always have an alarm chances are five days out of the week i wake up it's incredible and i'm sure people can relate i wake up like 10 minutes before it and i'm like quick quick, quick turn it off it's like my little challenge okay. um so for me, I always set one. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and I think it was a military podcast, and they set three alarms, a digital one, a handheld one, an electrical one, so there's no excuse for not waking up at 4 a.m. Get in this job. Yeah. Don't be at that extreme. <laughs> Just make sure your phone's plugged in. Um, so for me, I always set an alarm, but I wake up usually just before it. Got it. And do you drink uh, tea or coffee? Good question. Now for the athletes listening, I do intermittent fasting on my rest days. Interesting. Intermittent fasting. Um, I know you've had some health guys on previously. Yeah. I do 16 hours where I don't eat food. <gasps> yes, I know. 16 hours, but eight hours is when I'm asleep. Yeah. So if I stop eating at six one day, I can then eat at, uh-oh, testing my mouth real quick, 10. So 10 o'clock in the morning is when most people have breakfast. And breakfast is simply when you break your fast. That's what it stands for. Exactly. So for rest days, I have black coffee in the morning to spike my metabolism. Mm -hmm. So I start using fat. And then I'll have my first meal at whatever time I'm allowed to. Um... So yeah, to answer that question, my coffee guy. So, so that's on your uh, rest days, right? So you said you do intermittent fasting on your rest days, right? Mm -hmm. So and you, and you do a 16-8 uh, method and your window is between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. more or less, right? That's the eating window. Yeah, and of course, you know, it's great. It's adaptable. You know, if you go out with your yeah. friends, you don't finish till 8, then yeah. you can't eat to 12, you know, so it, it's flexible. Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, exactly. So, so intermittent fasting has definitely been one of the biggest topics for us and for this podcast. You know, we had a couple of really amazing, uh, amazing guests, and we did the intermittent fasting challenge a couple of months ago. And actually, awesome. this, is, this is one of the uh, habits that actually stick to me. You know, like uh, mm. we've, we've done so far. This is the sixth challenge we do. So, out of five, 
you know, we complete it uh, free of the actual habits really stick to me. And intermittent cool. fasting was uh, was the one. So that's uh, mm. that's awesome to hear. You're also in a club, in the yeah. secret club of the, you know. I know six, for a lot of people, they <laughs> 16 years. And I know there's warrior diets where, you know, you should do a 24 hour once a week. Don't push yourself that far just yet. But for some of the listeners, they might want to build muscle. There might be some athletes. You know, disclaimer, I'm a European athlete. I can do intermittent fasting. Not all the time. That's why I said rest days. On a training day, my body needs fuel. I can't afford coming into a session tired. For those looking just to burn calories, yes, train without having eaten on a fasted state. But if you're training for performance, I don't recommend it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm a speed reader and I'm an athlete. So I'm only speaking from my personal opinion, yeah. um, which has also been shared by many other athletes. Do it on your rest days if you are training for performance. And if you're looking just to lose weight, do it every goddamn day. Mm -hmm. You have no excuse. <laughs> Got it. Exactly. All right, sir. Listen up. <laughs> Awesome. So, uh, and, and so then on your training days, what, uh, mm -hmm. how, how, how does your nutrition looks like then? I'm a little fat boy at heart, so I have to be very careful. Breakfast, protein oats, lunchtime, a chicken wrap. And then, um, if we're going to get into details, I take some supplements before. Mm -hmm. Um, what sort of supplements? Like one happy to share. So glutamine, l glutamine. Um, it's great for, muscle growth that's why i take it before so when they start breaking down it can start repairing i take one called it sounds like ak-47 but it's called aconine and um, you might want to check that out aconine aconine pretty much dilutes the blood vessels it's legal it's something our body produces just like when our heart rate increases our blood vessels dilute the reason why i do this is because during my session i take bcas so the BCAs are then absorbed a lot better through my blood vessels, which helps me to train and also recover during training. And then straight after, whey protein with L-glutamine again to get that quick recovery. For me, I can't eat a lot because I need to be as light and as strong as possible with triple jump. And then in the evening, I was going to say I'd have typical British food, but British food is normally like lasagnas and pizzas and spaghetti bolognese. So, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I eat home cooking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my diet's not super strict. I try to eat under 3000 calories Got and it. make sure I get my protein. Got it. All right. That's awesome. So that's actually very good tips because uh, intermittent fasting made me very lean, but mm. I, I start feeling like, uh, like I'm also losing too much of the muscle mass and I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in gaining more. So, uh, thank you so much for the tips on the supplements. I'll, I'll definitely look deeper into them. Um, great. So, and um, do you do you do something for your mind fitness? You know, do you meditate or maybe you journal or you maybe you practice gratitude? What what is your game in a mind fitness space? Yeah, of course, being a reader and a big fan of Tim Ferriss. Um, if you're not familiar, go check him out. Don't check Ty Lopez. Check Tim Ferriss. You can tell him a fan a fan of. So Tim Ferriss talks about daily journals, meditation, et cetera, et cetera. I know headspace are killing it right now. For me, ugh, it's going to be controversial. It doesn't work for me. I've tried it, maybe not long enough. I understand it's got its benefits. I find other ways to switch off. So the great thing is I have my athletics life. And I have my business life. A lot of people have their identity tied up into one thing. I'm an entrepreneur. So when business goes bad, their, their world crumbles. Good thing, if my website goes down, which it was for three days, I'm still an athlete. I still go to track. I'm still strong. I'm still fast. So I can switch in between the two. So for my headspace and to make sure that I don't burn out is making sure every weekend or when I can, I, I go to social events. You know, I understand Gary V another entrepreneur you should check out, sacrifice his 20s. You don't have to do it the way he did it. There isn't a one mold fits all. So every weekend I try and go out with my friends. Um, I try and have me time every day, whether that's training, listen to my music, um, reading what I want to read and not reading because I have to read about how to put my website back online. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so for the for the listeners, once again, I know it's not practical advice, but find out what works for you. Um, try meditation. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It just doesn't work for me. You know, try taking up a sport. It might not work for everyone. Try going out once a week with your friends if financially and time-wise that's viable. Socialize. Yeah, just try and find ways to switch off and try not to tie your identity up into one thing because it can be deadly if you get an injury, business goes wrong, or your relationship with your loved one you know, ends, which it does, unfortunately. That's life. Um, and the way you keep moving forward is by having your identity tied up into multiple things. At least it's worked on my behalf. Got it. So I got two last questions. And, uh, and uh, one before the last is uh, the habit you want to develop next. What's next in the pipeline for you for your self-improvement game? Excellent. I discussed it earlier. Learning a new language. It is a fantastic field that I can't wait to delve into. And I'm delving into it right now. Um, I'm attacking it from all angles. I'm taking a uni course in it. Um, I'm learning online, audio, speaking to friends online on Instagram via Spanish. Um, so yeah, that's my next habit, making myself yeah. uncomfortable, trying to take those memory techniques that I've learned and applying them to learning a difficult word like quisiera, which means I want to. So quisiera, I want to, how do I remember such an abstract word, quisiera? Well, I picture a key over Sierra Leone. <laughs> so it works like that. So when it, the pronunciation sounds quite strange, you just break it down and attach it to something you already know. So key Sierra, a key over Sierra Leone. That's what I'm experimenting with right now. Got it. So your next habit will be speed language learning. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> all about speed. All about speed, man. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, and the final question, which I think will really kind of bind everything together, you know, uh, in, in this topic of speed reading. And the question is, a mm -hmm. book that changed your life. One it's of the many books you read. <laughs> it's an easy one. And, you know, I get asked this pretty much every day. I can imagine. Um, I, I've created a recommended books in my members area on my website. But the number one, which I'll give, I'm holding two one fingers up. It looks like 11. Number one is How to Win Friends and Influence Others by Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. The book is old. 1980, the examples about Lincoln, etc., but they're still prevalent today. About someone's name is the best compliment you can give them, and it can also be <laughs> the best insult if you get it wrong. It's things like a handshake, where to look on someone's face, that if there's someone of authority that you want to give respect to, look above their eyebrows. If you want them to be a friend, eyes, no area. And if you want them to be a lover, potential mate, look towards the bottom of the chin, so the lips. These little things I picked up before I even started the business. And what was great was it helped when it came to networking. It helped when building relationships because that's what business is about. Um, and it also taught me about memory because remembering what people are interested in makes you interesting. To be okay. interesting, you need to be interested. And I really put emphasis on, I really do need to remember what they did last week. So when I speak to them next, I can bring it up. And you see people's faces light up. So I know I'm biased in saying this, but having the ability to learn and remember is going to improve your relationships, your friendships, your businesses, because it's all about people. Amazing. Amazing. So actually... Uh, you know, besides all the tips you already gave, everybody who would implement, uh, you know, and learn all the things you just said, you know, how, learn how to speak uh, faster, how to have a mm. better memory, how to have a better comp comprehension. This will make you also better at creating relationships. You know, you'll be more interesting as a, uh, you know, as an individual. Mm. This, this actually probably will be also a good conversation starter or whatever. And, and for anybody who wants to, a practice more you know build their networking skills better we actually have a 21 day networking challenge <laughs> so many okay. challenges exactly so for 21 day you know uh, force yourself go uncomfortable meet new people meet at least one new person every day and see 
analyze their body language, learn mm -hmm. yourself how to be better at this and so on. But I will stop pitching all those challenges right now mm -hmm. because it's time, it's time to say a big, big fat thank you to you, Jordan. Thank you so much for all the knowledge you shared. Uh, I think we really, in one hour, we covered so many amazing topics. I hope everybody got a lot of value and I wish you a tremendous success with the studyfast.uk. Thank you so much, Taurus. Take care, guys. Keep reading fast and I hope to speak to you soon on Instagram. Take care. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this episode with Jordan and Harry. I think he shared an enormous amount of tips and tricks how to read faster, how to learn better and how to comprehend and you know memorize more of the stuff we read and learn. So I think that was enormous amount of amazing information right there. And of course, if you're a little bit curious about the book reading challenge I've mentioned a couple of times in this, uh, in this podcast episode, you can always find out more and sign up for the challenge by going to 21dayhero.com slash reading. And there you'll find out that this challenge is super, super simple. For 21 days, all you need to do is read 10 pages every single day. That's it. That's the whole challenge because the purpose of it, if you read at least a little bit every day, you'll see how simple it is and it's actually easy to incorporate in your lifestyle. And this way you'll be able to read, you know, roughly maybe one book a month. I think that's, that's definitely would be more than enough and would be probably 95% more than the rest of the population in this world. Okay. So check it out at 21dayhero.com slash reading. And of course, thank you so much for staying till the end, listening to this uh, awesome podcast. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content like this. And actually from now on, we're posting a new episode on every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.